Good morning, bowling fans, and welcome back to the Queens. This is day two of qualifying here at the Orleans in Las Vegas. And we will have two squads of coverage here today. This one that you're watching now. And then we'll have a little bit of a longer break today. And we'll resume with our A squad, their second round of qualifying five games will take place at 5 p.m. local time, 8 p.m. Eastern. I'm Jason Thomas. I'll be joined in just a moment by Aaron Smith doing some social media duties. Our updated standings are available at pwba.com and bowl.com, as well as live scoring. So our two featured pairs in front of us now. Our defending champion, Liz Johnson, is competing in front of us. And uh, she has the opportunity to bowl these qualifying rounds to improve her seating. She's automatically into the round of 64 as the defending champion. But a uh, good chance for her over these first three days of the tournament to experiment a little bit, get a look at the pattern, and uh, as I mentioned, also maybe improve her, her seeding. Also on this pair, Sarah DeSocia shooting at the two pin here. Katie Sutphin. And Giselle Poss. And our second featured pair, Chelsea Lamont, Christy Leong. Here in Michelle Felder. Sarah Munch.
Well, good morning, Jason Thomas. Good morning, sir. How are you? I'm doing excellent. We're all socialed up and ready to go. Katie Sutphin ready to go four in a row to kick things off. Some good scores yesterday. Definitely a very playable pattern when it's uh, all said and done looking at the scores from round one, of course. A squad competed on the fresh. B squad got the burn. So for our competitors bowling at the moment, this is their first look at the fresh 40-foot condition we have this week. And we'll see if Erin McCarthy can keep on striking. She did a whole bunch of that yesterday on her way to a 12.57 leading total for five games at 2.51.4 average. Yeah, and uh, not surprisingly, eight of the top 10 players in the tournament at this point uh, are on the B squad. They did get to bowl on the burn yesterday, so not a big surprise that they scored a little better than A. But uh, today there's no burn squad. There'll be uh, two fresh squads and a, quite a long break in between uh, squads here today. Might get to eat more than a hot dog. Eric. Hey, hey. <laughs> you can eat two hot dogs. Right? <laughs> <laughs> now, Jason, you mentioned uh, Liz Johnson, our defending champion, is already in the top 64, regardless of how she qualifies, she's actually sitting outside of the top 64 after one, so she was in, I believe, 88th place at plus 50. But it, this is something we talked a little bit about yesterday. Some players are gonna actually probably get more of their pins on the fresh. I see Liz being one of those players where this fresh pattern will probably play a little bit more to her strengths than some other folks, and off to a decent start so far. Yeah, I mean, you know, yesterday for her was almost just practice. Um, she She's really not going to see the burn all the rest of the event. So it was funny. She shot 50 over, but she didn't shoot a game under 200. So, she, you know, it's not like she was all over the place as far as scoring. And to me, that, that says she was just trying different uh, pieces of equipment, see, seeing what ball would go through the pins the best way. And, kind of experimenting. Um, you know, I, I, you don't want to have to bowl the top seed. So as as the tournament leader, you know, you don't, you want to try to improve your position. And I know uh, there's been mixed results since the, the rule's been changed as far as when, uh, how, how well the defending champion bowls. We've seen a couple of those defending champions actually miss the cut. And then you've, you've had Jason Belmonte lead qualifying a couple times as the defending champion so uh, you know it's it is what it is we'll see what happens with Liz but I'm sure uh, she's out there you know fishing around for uh, options for when the matches start well taking an early look at the cut line for that uh Technically, 63rd spot at the mo at the current moment. Uh, there's actually a three-way tie in 62nd. Kayla Stram, Alicia Kurt, and Clara Guerrero all at plus 75. So, a 2.15 average through the first day to be hanging around the number. So, definitely a lot of players plus when it was all said and done. I think more than half the field actually averaged 200 or better. You are correct. Yes. Uh, 144 players out of our 256. And at the very end, when you scroll all the way down, you see 300 games. We had one of them yesterday belonging to longtime Team Columbia member, Rocio Restrepo. Yeah, she shot at the last game of B-Squad yesterday. 
had a lot of other high scores and close calls at a 296 by Dina Buxton and a couple 290s. But uh, Rocio, first one to shoot 300. If you haven't seen it, there's a great video courtesy of Mr. Jason Thomas on the official PWBA Facebook page. So be sure to check that out. Be sure to follow the page if you haven't done so already. Again, with a 40-foot pattern being featured throughout the week here at the Queens. One of those lengths that offers multiple angles to get to the pocket. So, as we see, Giselle Paz get that one back from uh, way downtown. Ari starting a little bit left. Yeah, and if, if you remember from yesterday, if you're going to be in and trying to hook the ball, you can't miss left early um, you know as the day went on that that was a little more forgiving in fact you'll notice on uh, Rocio's 12th shot it was it was quite a bit in but um, early on in the day if you're going to play left to right you can't your miss has to be right See if Giselle can uh, repeat that performance here in a moment. A member, or I should say she bowled collegiately at Vanderbilt. Are they very strong and impressive program throughout the years? Definitely has a lot of hand. Generates a lot of power for someone of her size. Katie Sutphin from Mount Dora, Florida, had a pretty nice day yesterday. 11.28 on the burn. Looked like she didn't quite stick the landing on that one. Some footing issues. Katie's a, a player that's looking more and more confident out here on tour as she continues to uh, just get more tournaments under her belt. And you now she started uh, started making a run, a few cuts towards the end of last season, and looking pretty comfortable here in the early going.
some struggles out of the gates on 27 and 28. Seen a few opens early on. Only one double up on the board. So still trying to feel out this uh, this fresh condition. Once again, the first time they've got to see it, for, or they've been able to ex see it out here and both score on it. So they did get a practice session on Friday. Chelsea Lamont gets her first double. You'd like the opportunity to follow live scoring for the 2016 Queens. You can find it a few places, pwba.com. When you get to the home page, uh, the slider should pop up with USBC Queens coverage and results. Just click on that. That'll take you to pwba.com backslash live. Not only the link to extra frame, which you're already on, so you don't need to worry about that, but we have results tournament information and a big link at the top or right under the photo I should say to live scoring you can also get there by visiting bowl.com backslash queens you can click on the 2016 results to follow your favorite player we also have lane pairings available so you can see where they're at through each round of qualifying Lane pairing sheet, pretty helpful. There's a, we're pretty spread out here. Using 64 of the 70 lanes available here at the Orleans. So once again, the biggest Queens we've had in nearly a decade as far as participation goes. 256 of the top players from not only the United States, but internationally as well. Definitely a strong showing in the standings near the top two. Birgit Poplar from Germany shooting a 290 here on extra frame on her way to sitting in second after day one. 
Yeah, I had 290, 268 in her last two games, so <laughs> I think she enjoyed them very much once they started to hook. Unfortunately for her, she's not going to get to see that the rest of the week. But she took advantage of it while she had it, didn't she? She absolutely, and that's in talking with Aaron McCarthy yesterday, our round one leader. You know, she if you've seen Aaron Bull, you know, uh, getting left and making it boom is is her A game, and you know, she said, I definitely got to get the pins out there on the burn. You know, you never know what the fresh is going to give. She. I'm sure she's still going to strike a lot because uh, you can kind of get left to start here, but sh you know she didn't think she would strike nearly as much as she did on the fresh, averaging 251 for her five games. But yeah, get it while you can. Well, I'm sure she'll be interested in seeing how Kelly attacked the lanes yesterday on the fresh, and Kelly third overall, shot 223 over, and uh, Kelly also likes to move it left to right and back. So I think as long as Aaron understands that she'll just have a little bit less hold on the fresh, she should be fine. Messenger comes across the deck, but doesn't give Giselle the second hit in the 10th. Pretty big contrast in the scores between 25 and 26 and 27 and 28. Players on 25 and 6. We're gonna average around 220 for the for the group. Players on our other featured pair struggling to try to break 200. Only two of the players on that pair even have a chance to shoot 200. So 205 for Giselle Poss for game number one here. Game number six overall. Well, Mr. Thomas, uh, just going through live scoring real quick here. Aaron McCarthy, 104 in the eighth. Wow. So a uh, few splits up there. Actually, one, two, three, four, five splits through her first nine frames. She can get to get to 154, but just one strike to show for it. So surprisingly, on that same pair, Shayna Ung can still shoot 277. Well, it, it's uh, like I said, she may not realize that she doesn't have as much hold as she did yesterday, and it's also a little bit difficult when you've uh, come off such a big block the day before having such a good ball reaction from left. It, it tricks you into making you want to play a little bit further left than maybe you should on the fresh. I think the big thing for Aaron is just to not panic and get through this game and then realize you know, she's still got plenty of time to uh, make up that ground. And she had a pretty big cushion after uh, what she shot yesterday. Definitely. Diana Zavilova has a chance to be in the 270s after one. Final look at our defending champion. Keeping her 200 streak alive. It's a pretty impressive game there. He's just kind of worked her way through a couple of different bowling balls and got some different looks. And oh, just shot 237 also.
here in Michelle Felder. Getting some momentum at the end of that game for uh, the last five strikes after a few opens in the early going. 182. Shot there by Christy Leong, a titleist at the Women's Championships. Saw her bowl in Sacramento last week. He finds a double here at the end of the game. Looks like Singapore's Hugh Finn New is going to be around. She's got penguins on today. Oh. All is right in the world. There we go. <laughs> for Christie with all three in the 10th. Looks like she might have figured something out there towards the end of the game. But uh, four splits. Ouch. Sarah will get to 181, so a little bit of a rough start on 27 and 28, but go to a fresh pair, get a fresh start. All right, well, uh, as we wait for our competitor competitors to get to our featured pairs, we'll uh, switch the camera view here, get, to get a shot of the low end of the house. There it is. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the low end of the house. It's everything you thought it would be and more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you were there, uh, their pairs are popping on, so looks like the 2015 PWBA Storm Sacramento Open Champion, Alicia Current, going to be on 21 and 22. Be sure to tune in tonight where we will show you the high end of the house. Whoa, that's, that's crazy talk. And I know. I know people will be setting their their phones and any possible alarm they can to make sure to, to catch that glimpse at the high end of the house. That's true. The design on the wall, similar but different. Looks like Shayna Ung finished with 266. Wow, a lot of big scores over on 29-30 from game number one. Danielle McCune, 247.
So the low end of the house power hour. Hope everyone enjoyed it. Going back to our feature pairs. Looks like we're about ready on 27 and 28 to get going. See, I wasn't lying. There's, there's the penguin shirt. Joining us on 25 and 26 for game two of round two of qualifying. We have Juliana Franco, Brooke Bauer, Lisa Farwell, and Josie Ernest. We saw Lisa and Josie yesterday. Over on 27 and 28, Hugh Fenu, Karen Marcano, Morgan O'Brien, and Tina Williams. A great shot by Juliana. Nearly has the eight pin stand. Lisa Farwell starting with 244 here in round two. We got to see Lisa yesterday. Put together a clean 180, high 180 game. So nice to see her striking out of the gates here. Got an interesting uh, analysis from Stu Williams on uh, Aaron McCarthy's opening game, and uh, he said it very easily could have been less than 142. Wow! She made uh, a couple of splits and a washout, uh, or else it could have been 120 or worse. Goodness! And he said, interestingly enough, that because uh, we were speculating that that she had started too far left. And in reality, it appears that she actually was trying to play too far right. And he said she only went light once, and then every other shot was on the nose. And he just was, was uh, surprised that she never over moved left and, um, you know, gave herself a chance to strike. He said everything was through the nose. And, uh, so interesting analysis from Stu Williams. I suspect that Aaron will figure out that she can miss right and still get the ball back. But sometimes you, you wash out in the first frame and that spooks you a little bit. Certainly could be so. And yeah, a uh, 
quite a different change from what, sh what we saw yesterday where she averaged more than 250. But she said uh, the spare game wasn't as good as she would have liked in the first few weeks on tour, so covering a few splits, making the washouts, so saving some spares there, but some splits just uh, not going to get. Yeah, she, I mean, she'll definitely need to figure out a little better strategy for uh, the fresh because once she makes it into the match play, a lot of a lot of those matches are going to be conducted on the fresh, so you don't want to be throwing out 140s your first game, giving yourself a giant hill to climb. Shot by Brooke Bauer on 25. A little background on Brooke. She is the defending Diamond Singles Champion at the USBC Women's Championship. She shot 781 at the National Bowling Stadium last year. And she is the daughter of USBC Hall of Famer Gary Bauer. And PBA Champion Daryl Bauer is her uncle. So, the Bauer family. The Bowling Bowers. The Bowling Bowers, yes. And uh, Jonathan Bauer would be her first cousin then, correct? That is her cousin, correct. Yeah. We have Bridget Poplar, one, uh, one pair to our left. 236 start for her, so. Looks like she's gonna be a force to be reckoned with this week. Finding a good look early on and starting with two in a row. Make it three in a row here in game two. Another player pretty far left to start.
Juliana Franca with four in a row to start game two. I feel like we're seeing a bigger variety today of angles compared to what we had out of the gates yesterday with uh, with A squad. Seems like the hook players are even further left to start and we saw if people want to play the more direct line, definitely closer to their A game I would imagine, and a little more comfortable to the right. But you think that might cause uh, a little bit rougher day for A squad tomorrow when they finally get to bowl the burn? Well, the, the thing that's the thing that's uh, interesting about it is that I don't think it will because normally the burn the burn is the, is two consecutive days, right? So what what typically happens is. What you're seeing out here now with a lot of players being fooled by what they did yesterday, they're going to have a day where that's not going to affect the other squad, which is today. So it might actually be an advantage a little bit for, uh, for the other squad because I think tomorrow these players are going to have a lot more defined idea of where they're going to play on the fresh. And... That's that's going to help the other squad a little bit. I think I think uh, a squad when they get the burn, they'll, they'll probably have something pretty similar to what B had yesterday. I would think. But that's only because we're doing the fresh day in the middle, which is is an unusual situation. Fresh day Sunday. Really doesn't have a ring to it, but <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll go with it. We'll we'll go with it for the time being until we think of something better. do know is we have updatings or updated standings through to Virgin Poplar. Now our overall leader at plus 274. We mentioned one pair to our left here. Two thirty six to start. Front five here in She started with the front five here in game two. Corrine Lieber from Washington, plus 231. Daria Payuk, plus 226. Shayna Ung with that 266 game moves up to plus 22, or plus 222. Dana Buxton from Australia, plus 210. Diana Z, plus 200. Aaron McCarthy, with that 142, drops all the way to plus He made up 136 pins on Aaron McCarthy in one game. That's sizable. <laughs> Tina Williams, somebody that you would think would uh, fare pretty well on the fresh, but uh, she's kind of been all over the place this game. Back-to-back -back Brooklyn's there for a double. 
She did come out of the gates at 222, so. Take a good look at the first pair. I'm not quite sure about this pair yet. We, we saw the players really struggle on it in game one. Um, it didn't seem like it was a, a too difficult of a pair yesterday, anything out of the ordinary, but uh, I don't know. We'll have to keep an eye on it. It yeah. seemed like for the most part the bigger scores were coming from 25 and 26. Yeah. But it's like Wei Fen News figured it out after three spares. Now a turkey. I think she would be good on just about anything. We could probably <laughs> take her out to the parking lot here at the Orleans and she would find a way to knock down 10 pins. You're probably so. right. So new, nearly made the show in all three PWBA stops so far this season. Came up just short at the opening event, the PWBA Las Vegas Open. Finished tied for fifth. Then made the step ladders in Sonoma County and Sacramento. Early front runner for player of the year. Not just Rookie of the Year. Both her and Shannon Pluhowski have made two shows here in the early going of the 2016 season. Shannon actually two for two because she did not bowl in Sonoma County. She had a uh, youth event back home in Dayton that she was running that weekend and given back to uh, Given back to the kids and helping provide a future for the sport. Came back from the sabbatical and did all right in Sacramento. Masters champion. She was a, I remember from that, she was a really, really good spare shooter uh, because I remember when she won that tournament, they were just, the lanes were, the conditions were just impossible. And uh, she basically won by making more spares than anybody else. That seems to be a common tread with uh, that event. Uh, tough conditions. They also limit uh, what kind of bowling balls you can use at that event, Correct. too? All right, that's. Great. So Poplar finally misses just off to our left. She had the front six. She hasn't had much trouble figuring out the fresh. Yep. Uh, definitely on pace to put up a big number once again. Might make my job easy at the end of this block, knowing uh, knowing who I have to run down to get a few quick thoughts from if she keeps uh, shooting 230 plus. Yeah. You never know. There's there's a pretty good player on the the other squad though that uh, wouldn't count out. Oh, definitely. Especially if it if you know the consequences are you having to work more. Oh, of course, yes. <laughs> uh, <I'll> <laughs> that would be Kelly Kulik. Kelly, pretty good on the fresh yesterday, so you would you would expect similar results today. And she didn't get her score late either. She got it early. She shot 266, 268 right out of the, the gate.
Jason looking through uh, live scoring right now. Aaron McCarthy uh, has made the right move. Spare double, spare three bagger so far. So she can get back to plus for this block. Uh, this game if she if she throws a few more strikes. Virtual tour of the bowling center, and uh, one one player alive for 300 still here in game number two or seven, depending on how long of a view you're taking of the event. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I might have to excuse myself. Wow. I don't know if uh, you caught the strike on 24, but I did. You, you can Some get pins it. Pins moving on that. Absolutely, but yeah, it didn't look like she was too happy with uh, the direction off, off her hand. But as we talked about here in the early going, right is definitely uh, where you want to miss, and she got that one to, uh, to come a long ways back. She might have looked perturbed at the quality of the shot, but I guarantee you she wasn't by the uh, fact that it struck. And it's true. How it reacted. Seven out of eight for Poplar. Over on 23 and 24. Josie Ernest just not finding the finding the way to get all ten to fall here in game two. Just one strike through eight. A shot by Morgan O'Brien. The hit on the ten. Her second double, four out of five. Franco with a possible 267 here.
Karen Marcano slapped off a late messenger strike in the ninth and can shoot 225. And uh, there's the miss in that she can't get away with on the fresh. Brooke Bauer flags on the eight pin. So best she can shoot now, 188. Wei Fen New gets the first one in the tenth. She can shoot 247. Two more. Shayna Ung, a clean 217 after a nice 266 start. Forty-six for Franco, so plus forty-two on the day. Farwell is going to give some pins back after a two-forty-four start, but we'll see if she can run down the split. struggle in this game to try to figure out how to get to the pocket. Tried a couple of different things, a couple of different balls, and uh, not much seeming to work. She had gotten herself back to even for the tournament after starting off 22 under yesterday. But uh, now going to fall back a little more, depending on what she does here in the 10th frame. Morgan O'Brien can still shoot 247. Can match her fellow player on lane 28, Wei Fen Nu, finished with the same score. Well, Jason, uh, you said yesterday you really haven't made it until we've messed up your name on extra frame. Uh -oh. So I. Uh, Saw Brian O'Keefe walking around, and I, I had to ask him about uh, our current tournament leader on how to pronounce her first name. It's actually Burgett. 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 Not, so not Bridget. So we have to switch some of the vowels around, but uh, Burgett. But she finishes with a 245. And yes, bowling like that. Uh, we're definitely going to have to be saying her name a lot more, so thanks to Brian for the quick assist on that. She's made it now. She has made it. <laughs> Plus 81 after two, finishes with 245. Had a, had a split in the ninth frame there, but... It's certainly uh, on her way to a... Another nice day.
Well, that's going to do it for game number two here today. We'll be back with more coverage here on Extra Frame of the USBC Queens from the Orleans in Las Vegas, Nevada. We'll be back with more in just a minute. Game number three out of five for qualifying here at the 2016 USBC Queens. Second round for B Squad underway on 25 and 26. Rebecca Sharp Keegan, Taylor Baltice, Brandy Calderon, and Christina Wendell joining us here. Still waiting for our competitors on 27 and 28.
are both underway here on uh, game number three. Both pairs arriving and pair to our left got a little bit of a quicker start, so they are in frame two. But, uh, another good group of players coming in here for game number three. We have Jordan Newham along with Crystal Shaw Wesby. They're up at the moment. They'll be joined by Elise Bolton and USBC and PWBA Hall of Famer Tish Johnson. Tish uh, looks like she's liking the fresh. 489 through two. Wasn't it game three? Uh, no, it was game four yesterday when we saw Shampluhowski hit 27 to 28 and put up about 260, 270. Yeah, that, that actually got her back into the tournament because at that point she was uh, 65 under. Right now, she's at plus 47. Shot 278 that game. And then uh, followed it up with 234. So, big finish for, for Shannon to get herself back in it. Could have easily found herself way outside looking in. Tish finished runner up in the Senior Queens, which seems to be her kind of penciled in spot for the last last few attempts, huh? That has been the case. It's been uh been pretty incredible in 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 a different way, I guess, if you will. It's uh four straight years. Four straight years, yep. It's way the tournaments are being held this week. She's gets, getting the opportunity to compete in both. So it's been uh, the senior players not, haven't necessarily had that opportunity the past few years. It's kind of been pick and choose which one you like to do. So maybe Tish is going to uh, just go ahead and take care of business here in the regular Queens and get that first tiara. I'm sure she would be Happy, she'd prefer to do that, I think. And uh, after six games, she was 25th overall. So once we get our update, we can give you the, the latest standings on where she is in the field. Christina Wendell looking for three in a row. Not the result she was hoping for, four, six, seven, but I have to admit, Christina was uh, a player I wasn't very familiar with. When all of a sudden she was the top seed at the opening regular season event back in Sacramento in 2015. And fell to eventual champion Alicia Current in the finals, but definitely a nice way to uh, make a name for yourself right out of the gates. Yeah, and then she almost made the show the following week as well. And um, we kind of quickly had to put a bio up for her on pwba.com.
We'll be here live on Extra Frame. Assuming everything cooperates with us throughout the rest of the week. All the way through until the Stepladder Finals. The Stepladder Finals will be this upcoming Thursday, May 26th at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. local time here in Las Vegas. That show can be seen on a CBS Sports Network. And speaking of CBS Sports Network, we're going to have another show in just a few days on there, so be sure to check out the Intercollegiate Team Championships and Women's Final taking place on Tuesday at 10 p.m. Eastern. That matchup will feature Wichita State taking on Weber International. And speaking of Weber International, one of the players you'll see in that show stepping up on lane 26, Taylor Baltice. Off to a good start here, three in a row. Looking to make it four, 388 after two. Christina Wendell struck, but uh, someone noticed that the eight pin was missing out of the rack, and uh, so she's gonna have to reshoot it. Yeah, it's missing again. Saw this happen yesterday on this pair. Or maybe they didn't notice it. Johnson starts off with a turkey. So uh, she's uh, definitely, definitely sharp, definitely tournament ready here. It's been, uh, she started off at the USBC Women's Championships a few miles south of here. Got her nine games in over there. Senior Queens was a uh, pretty dominating performance overall. Probably averaged about two and a quarter for the for the entirety of the event. So I mean, she was just blocked the whole time and a hit or two away from forcing a a second match in the true double elimination format against now three-time defending champion Robin Romeo. Yeah, that match could have gone either way pretty easily. Yeah, one of, one of the stranger matches I've seen kind of unfold. Uh, if you haven't seen it, you can check out the archive on Bowl TV. It's youtube.com backslash Bowl TV. We won't spoil it for you, but spare shooting at a premium. It was, although it wasn't hard to get to the pocket. Uh, I, I don't think the players missed the pocket more than twice between them. So uh, it's just hard to carry. Robin Romeo left a couple of solid eights. Tish had left a couple of ring sevens. A few uh, mixed tens. Three of them, I think. Yeah. Including uh, one that really needed to fall in the 10th frame. But yeah. Yeah, just, a, just kind of a strange and wacky final match, but certainly exciting, certainly worth taking a look. It's again, youtube.com backslash bowl TV. Six in a row over on 29 and 30. Meek 
Miku Hirano, I believe. Taking care of business. Half of the game down, half to go. them up and she'll take it. <laughs> the last one strikes and that doesn't really that's bowling that is bowling occasionally a very cruel sport and by occasionally you mean all the time <laughs> All right, we have scores updated through game number two of round two. Birgit Poplar, Germany, as expected, leading the way, plus 319 for her overall performance through seven total games. Corrine Lieber, plus 276. Aaron McCarthy, big bounce back, joins the 100. Pin Improvement Club, 248 <laughs> after a rough 142. She's back to plus 247. Shayna Ung, plus 239. Real Tan, plus 237. Kelly Kulik still sitting in the uh, top 10, even though she has not bowled yet today, plus 223. Daria Payuk, plus 213. Dana Buxton, plus 198. Tish, plus 196, currently in ninth. 234 and 255. Diana Zavilova and Brittany Smith at plus 193. 
so the, the one rough game Brittany Smith had pretty much for this entire event we got to see on extra frame yesterday. Right, right. So you, well, you're judging by that one game and uh, you think, well, she's not bowling that well. But uh, yeah, as uh, shot 182, but finished 234, 245, 257 yesterday, a pair of 2.20 games to kick things off today. We have a few front sevens out there. Yeah, I'm gonna try to figure out the best way to handle that. Looks on 19 and 20, Sherry Tan. On 39 and 40, Ferdy Crawley. She pulled one last year. This event. variation on some of, some of the pairs as, as far as how far along they are in the games. I noticed that uh, especially on the very low end of the house we had some folks in the second or third frame at this point so yeah and then got a, a pair on 65 and 6 that are in the ninth frame they're overachieving <laughs> well let's uh Decide how to divide our time. Verity Crawley now with the front eight. Sherry Tan. Now she's got the front eight too. Wow. Decisions, decisions. One young lady who had the front eight yesterday, Brandy Calderon. She had the front ten. Front ten, is yeah. that where? Yeah. I knew you. Uh, you made the march down there. I did. She split in the on the eleventh, right? Correct. Okay. And she had a unfortunate break. Uh, the the rack did not spot the nine pin, so she had to re rack it. And uh, she said it made it it made it a difference. It, she went high flush the first shot in the tenth, so she was going to make a two and one move and. Uh, because she had to wait, she said she got a little soft and the two and one wasn't quite enough, so. Did have a nice overall day yesterday. Plus 140. She's had another eight pins under that, so plus 148 for her event so far and currently has her in 22nd. Once again, we still got the A squad to go later tonight, so. Let's see what it looks like when it's all said and done. But nice tournament. As this is kind of the halfway point of qualifying now that I, it dawns on me. Game 7.5. Looks like. Verity missed. Verity so. missed. It's going to take a little pressure off of me. Have to run from one to another. Oh, 19. Wow, we're really close to 1920. I forgot what lanes we were on. Uh, don't need. Don't even need to look at the live scoring for this one. Sherry Tan. That 
That looked good from here. That's my cue. By Jason Thomas. Jason Thomas uh, recording these events in hopes of a perfect game. We saw one yesterday, Rocio Restrepo, in the very last game of B-Squad qualifying. Our final squad, or our final game of the entire day. Roll the 300, and that was captured and posted on the PWBA Facebook page, so to be sure, be sure to check that out. PWBA, also on Twitter, at PWBA Tour. Of course, pwba.com, your information for everything PWBA related. Got player bios, tournament schedule, live stream, and broadcast schedule, photos, videos. Everything you would want and more. So we have two games left to go after this one for B-Squad qualifying. And then just a reminder to everybody, we're going to have a little bit, little bit of a change in the schedule. So it will be a pretty sizable break in between before we get back to A-Squad. So that's scheduled to start at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 local time here at the Orleans Bowling Center. Once again, a big thanks to Mike Kaufman and his staff for providing a great facility for us to use for this first major championship of the 2016 PWBA season. Nice shot by Taylor there to set the ninth. She can still get to 245. Business as usual for Tish Johnson. She still has 250s out there. Sherry Tan getting ready to step up on the approach for her run at perfection in just a moment. Nice shot by Christina. She will also have a chance to get into the 240s. Tan delivers the first strike in the 10th. Jason Thomas still unscathed for the day.
Sherry Tan looking to make it 11 in a row. And through the nose, 2 4 7. So, 287 still out there for her, but nice run. Big number for the talented left hander from Singapore. All right, 10th frame underway on 25 and 26. Brandy Calderon finishes with 182. Rebecca Sharp, 200 on the nose. Christina Wendell delivers the first strike in the 10th. 243 still available for her. Christina sitting in a tie for 29th, plus 134. Volt ties gets 225 with strike on her fill ball. So approaching the end of game number three here. And a little up, a little down. Tish Johnson still has a chance for 257. So that could possibly move her up in the standings. Already in the top 10. Tough break for Crystal there to kick off the. Oh, it did fall. All right. 710 was up there for a fleeting moment. Jason, uh, I was letting the folks know on extra frame about uh, Sherry Tan's run. I'm guessing that 11th shot just uh, just right off her hand, and she gobbled. She gobbled. Lefty gobble. Lefty gobble. Two four seven nine, or two four seven eight. Sorry. But uh, two eighty six has always seemed to help your score. They do have a funny way of doing that. 225 for Taylor, 242 for Christina. And we'll see if Tish can get to get into the 250s. Runs a tad high, leaves the six. Drops her max total to 236. Nice shot from Elise. Kick 
off the 10. So you can still get the 204. Yeah, Mi struggling this block, though. Minus 55 yeah. coming in. I'll tell you, watching Tish, pretty impressive the way she's playing the lanes compared to how she played them in the senior queens. In the senior queens, she was hitting it pretty hard and uh, going, going uh, right to left quite a bit. And uh, here, definitely much straighter up the boards, not hitting it quite as hard, taking a little off of it. And uh, obviously not having too much trouble figuring them out. Shoots seven. 25 her first three games. Very, very impressive. She's already, as we mentioned, got a few games under her belt between Senior Queens and the Women's Championships already taking place. But yeah, there's a uh, There's no reason to not expect her to make a run and be a, be a threat to be dealt with in match play. And we'll get to see another lefty coming up here in a moment for game four, Ashley Rucker making it to 25 and 26. Ashley's game a little more, uh, a little more direct than what Tish tends to do. A little more ball speed. So we'll get to see how she's attacking the lanes in just a moment. That was quick. Game four. That was quick. Th these five-game blocks go by very quickly, not just for us, but also for the players. And uh, it's kind of the interesting thing about this format is you can you can bowl three blocks and almost feel like where where the time go by. Could definitely see that, and yeah, depending on also how it's going on the lanes out there. If it's if it's going bad, it's doesn't seem like you got a lot of time to kind of collect your thoughts and figure out what's going on. On the other side, if it's going good, keep it going. Just stay on the pace. And a Z after that 278 to start. Slow down just a bit. 193 in game number two, and then 211 in game number three. Verity Crawley has a nice block going, 691 for her first three. Wow, ring and ten there. They're uh, they're doing something right over there at Weber, but uh, between getting to see Verity and uh, Daria Paiuk yesterday, there's. They generate a lot of power. Yeah, definitely. They, there must be something in the water in Babson that <laughs> gives you big rev rates. Yeah. 
So we got to see Tish Johnson last game, and uh, this game we get to see Karen Barkall, who made the finals in the Senior Queens. Karen qualified in the number four seed, won her first match, and lost to Australia's Robin Flynn to finish the week in fourth. So very nice week from her. Karen from Albuquerque. And then Char Hamill also has had some success in the Senior Queens. It's true, the 2010 champion and competed this week. This is uh, this event just, just down the block for her. She lives in Las Vegas. Jelmar Beasley also on the pair. Lefty, seen her on television in the competing in the World Series uh, telecast just a few months back. And uh, to round out the pair, two-time defending intercollegiate singles champion Emily Eckhoff. Talk about a great show on uh, CBS Sports Network aired just a few weeks ago. Emily has been impressive in both of her ISC wins and in slightly different ways. In 2015, she, she just ran away with it, posting a pair of 237 games to take home the title in her sophomore year and came back as a junior, of course, one of the, uh, one of the best match play matches possibly ever against Julia Bond. Eckhoff won 782 to 772 to advance. Once again, not a double elimination format in the ISCs. One of those games, the middle game, Eckhoff shot 300, Bond spared in the first, back 11, 290. So that essentially ended up being the difference in the match. But on the finals, Eckhoff actually had a rough look to start, made a big ball change, and had to step up in the 10th, throw a double to win. She threw uh, about two of the prettiest shots you'll see in that situation and struck on the third for good measure and became the first player on either, on either the men's or the women's side to defend a title at the ISC. Talked a little bit about everybody on our featured pairs here, except for Marshall Klompkin stepping up on lane 26. Marsha passed Team USA member. Very good player. Of course, her husband, Steve. Recently inducted into the USBC Hall of Fame just just a few weeks ago here in Las Vegas. We actually had uh, Steve on the on extra frame during the PWBA Las Vegas Open just a few days after the induction ceremony. So always great to get in chat with him. Yeah, Marsha bowling well. She's uh, currently inside the cut line. And uh, maybe, maybe Steve will come out and uh, show a little support later <laughs> in the week. Not too far of a drive, assuming he's in town.
Always nice to see Steve. We got a nice thank you note from him for the, uh, the evening, and it was a just as it is every year, one of the one of the best nights of the year. Actually, got a chance to also sit down with uh, Joan Romeo yesterday and talk to her for a little while, and she was inducted as well. Joan, one of the all-time great ambassadors of the sport, and very, very deserving of the introduction, and certainly glad to uh, to see her and have had the opportunity to chat with her over the course of the years with everything she does for the sport. And although, have we figured out, is it sauce or is it gravy? <laughs> it depends on your point of view, I think. Of course, making a, making a little joke, Joan was in a commercial a few years back. Bon Jovi. Not the rock star, but, but the pasta sauce. But the pasta. Looks like Diana's kind of re recalibrated where she was uh, playing and pretty well lined up here in game number four. We've seen her get, uh, get out of the gates well so far on this tour season. Was it in Sacramento or Sonoma County she started uh, the first Sonoma. block? Sonoma with a with perfect game. Yeah, just barely missed the show there. You know, two, two, two ways really. Just the last frame of the match play around, she dropped from a leader to second, which put her in the group step ladder, and then she lost the final match to make it onto the show, so just missed out on the show there. Former champion in this event. Also won our event in Welch, Minnesota last year. I have to say the Welch stop was was my favorite because it was the only one I was at last year. <laughs> so that was uh, a very cool experience getting to work with our good friends at TN Marketing and uh, the USBC Bowling Academy and uh, just uh, following Kelly Kulik around for an entire tournament to understand just... Uh, how the tournament player thinks throughout the entire block. And so we essentially followed her pair to pair, game to game, recorded every shot, kept track of it. And then talked to Kelly after it was all said and done to get an understanding of thought process, uh, what was going through her mind then and why she was making the moves she did as she ended up making the stepladder final. So almost Almost a perfect ending. Uh, she ended up losing to Diana in the opening match of the stepladder. It's hard to win when your opponent throws the front nine at you. Very true. But no, that was a great experience and uh, a lot of great insight into how, how many adjustments. I actually had somebody come up to me yesterday and ask, why don't you change the patterns every day for, the, for, the, for this event? And I, I wasn't really interested in getting into a long debate over all the different adjustments that the players at this level have to make, even when the pattern's the same every day. But uh, if I did feel like getting into that debate, <laughs> I, I would have pointed her in the direction of just watch that that video that we shot with Kelly Kulik and ask her if she didn't have to make any adjustments all week and the pattern wasn't changed once.
But yes, yeah, certainly, uh, I think that video alone worth uh, worth checking out the Bowling Academy. But so much great content on there from USBC Gold Level coaches. And always a deal if you uh, sign up for the newsletter and get the uh, get the deals through your email. Be sure to check them out. That's usbcbowlingacademy.com. So Diana stepping up in frame number six, working on four in a row. Definitely one of the most dynamic games in the sport. I'm able to get the 10 pin out there. I think Diana is a perfect ex example of kind of how the games change, especially on the women's side with uh, when you watch her finish off her releases actually ends up kind of in front of her face and to the left of it and that's uh, helps her generate uh, the speed and the revs that she does and yeah we see a lot of players on the men's tour doing that same thing Wes Malott, Mike Fagan who's now retired and I just noticed is in the crowd wearing a uh, flip-flops now that he lives in Berkeley yes uh, I I won't get into my opinion on flip-flops here in general <laughs> just so that's it's funny because because he has nice golf slacks on and, and his uh, staff uh, pull over and and flip-flops you know I guess you moved to Berkeley and that, that rubs off on <laughs> you <right? laughs> to see a lot of Mike in the past few days helping out the misses Emily Fagan both at the women's championships and now here at the Queens she's also bowled a few of the west coast stops and I think Mike ju jumped on extra frame for a little bit during one of those chatted up with, with Matt and Emil King of swing. King of flip-flops. Verity <laughs> <laughs> Crawley illustrating that lanes haven't quite gotten to the point yet where you can get far enough left to where you have hold. Parity, out of anybody in the field, can go left to right as, as well as anybody. But uh, that one didn't quite get as far to the right and it doesn't lay off. So Another game or, or so and you'd be able to do that. But uh, again, today there's no burn squad. So Yeah, nice conversion. Uh, three, six, seven, ten.
Marsha Klompkin setting herself up with the strike in the seventh, still looking for her first double of the game. No open frames. Taking a quick look on the live scoring. Looks like uh, Weefa New front seven on 51 and 52. We've also got our eight game update, Aaron Smith. Oh my. Excitement. And I think I know who I'm talking to after this. Uh, it's looking that way, isn't it? After this block concludes. Brigitte Poplar of Germany, 748 for her first three. Now at plus 386. Next closest competitor, Shayna Ung, plus 276. So open up the lead a little bit. It's going to make it hard on Kelly Kulik to catch her. I'm thinking so. If uh, Yeah, two more games like this and... She's averaging at 248 plus for her eight games. So pretty much unfazed by whatever's been out there to this point. There's also some special awards. So Crystal, if you happen to lead the blocks and also for the overall top qualifier after 15 games. So she's in the running for, for those awards, which are, which are very nice, nice touch. They are. They're actually uh, sitting in the tournament office right now, so. So the players can uh, check them out when they came to register and check in. And so they're prepared to throw strikes at just like that by Diana Z. Chatting it up with her former teammate at Weber International, Verdi Crawley. In between her, or I guess the Queen's win would fall in between uh, her collegiate success, capturing the 2012 team title with Weber and the singles title in 2014 and one of the most impressive uh, performances I think I've ever seen on TV where she shot, what was it? I think 289 and 290. So 589, I think 20, I forget which game had the, I think she had the front 10 the first game and then made two, two spares, who does that? And then uh, back 11, the last game of the championship match. For a nice 589 for two. That'll usually get you the W. <laughs> <laughs> usually, yes. And her opponents, you know, it wasn't like they were bowling on a league pattern. Uh, oh, definitely not. And in the final match, she bowled against Wichita State's Tanya Rumpumper. And I think Tanya shot 230 or 240 that game. So... I know that was a tough loss for her. She had made the finals the year before and had another monster game shot at her by Christina Mickelson, then representing Nebraska. So I know there were definitely some emotions after, after that one, a tough loss. But Tanya 
definitely one of the top competitors in the world representing Indonesia. Tanya also made the show at the 2014 USBC Queen, so we'll see if she can make a run again this year. Marsha makes a three in a row to set up the 10th frame. Grinded through the first half of the game, just two strikes, but filled her, filled her frames up and finished at 239 with three more strikes. This cue from Crawley, unable to convert the 10 pin. Diana Z, possible 258. And uh, she's got it dialed in. Looking to move up and give herself a little bit of cushion. Currently 13th place. Tough way to start the tenth for Marsha. Big four. Yeah, those are those are killers. Looking to shoot a pretty pretty big game there. Could have shot two thirty nine, and then now if she gets two. She shoots two oh one. So thirty eight pin. Ouch. Nice shot from Beasley. She still has two forty eight out there. Man, 
uh, you could tell from, I guess where I'm sitting at, I, I didn't necessarily see the location of the ball off her hand and where she projected it to, but you could tell from her, uh, just from her, what her body said afterwards, that holy cow, where did I throw that one? Yeah, and, and still hit the pocket. Nearly made it all the way back. Forty-seven for Diana Z. And uh, that could possibly move her up a couple spots. Yeah, they'll put her at plus uh, 129 for the day with one to go. I have to wonder, since we've seen some of these guys walk past us so many times with uh, the ball reps out here, I'd like to see their uh, step totals at the end of the day. <laughs> those guys uh, yeah. those guys put some miles on. Definitely. Going back and forth, you saw Jim Callahan and Chris Barnes roll by for about the 58th time today. Yeah, especially in these long format two squad or three squad events. Get into the bowling center at 6.30 a.m. And tonight we're going to leave 9 or 10 o'clock. It's, it's a long day. Yep, absolutely. Plus it's Vegas, so nothing's close. <laughs> and Jelmar Beasley can shoot 248, so that'll help her cause. Currently 45th. Char Hamill can shoot 225. Char sitting at plus 55 for the event so far. Got a big 258 last game. Looking to get to plus 80. That's, that's pretty respectable. Beasley with uh, 27, missed left on or missed right on that one. She'll still be in the 230s though, so heading in the right direction. That's going to wrap up game number four. And uh, we're going to wait for the players to get in position for game number five. We'll have one more game of coverage here on the B squad from the USBC Queens here at the Orleans in Las Vegas. I'm Jason Thomas with Aaron Smith, and we'll be back with more coverage 
in just a moment here on Bull TV on Extra Frame. All right, our fifth and final game of B-Squad qualifying here in round two at the 2016 USBC Queens. Underway, joining us on 25 and 26, we have Jessica Millat, Brandy Branca, Nicole Bauer, and our opening round leader, Aaron McCarthy. Over on 27 and 28, we have Yuki Akiyoshi stepping up on 28 in a moment. Danielle Schilling, Brandy Sanderson, and Corrine Lieber. We've been saying her name a lot, but this is the first opportunity we'll get to see her compete here. So she's been around the top of the standings all week so far. Bauer delivers the strike. So we got to see both Bowers. That's uh, Brooks' sister. Perhaps they exchanged notes on 25 and 26. Brooke was there a few games ago.
Looks like Erin McCarthy's got her game figured out. It's been an up and down block for her. Minus six for the block after starting off with that 142 earlier this morning. But uh, now that the uh, lanes have had a few games on them, it's looking a little more similar to what she had yesterday, I'm sure. Just gonna need to figure out that fresh once the matches get underway. As we said, she did build up a little bit of a cushion so can, can afford a, a game like that to find out uh, what wasn't working. So that's, even in a rough game, there's information to be learned and she'll have the opportunity to see the fresh again, so. Yep, she knows no, what not to do now. <laughs> McCarthy, not only are the, are the conditions getting to where she, what she likes to see, but she also had a friend and teammate on this pair of the game before, so there's no doubt she scouted this pair out and uh, knew exactly what to do, where to play. And I don't know. We could. I might have to get my camera ready. <laughs> Early predictions from Jason Thomas. Yeah. Throwing it out there. That's right. Just seeing if it plays. <laughs> Jessica Malott steps up for the 3-6-10 conversion. She's a member of the McKendry women's bowling team. She made a great run at the ITCs this year, and Jessica was anchoring that team in their final, or the semifinals, to see who would advance to the TV show. They had to go to a second round of games against Weber International, and in game six, the opportunity presented them, presented itself for Jessica to throw two strikes in the 10th to force a game seven, and she delivered, and that was just, couldn't imagine not only having the game on the line, the season on the line, but having seven other people affected by the results, as well as all the, you know, fit, friends and family out there and just absolutely clutch beyond belief throwing those two shots they unfortunate for them they ended up losing the next game so they finished in third for the 2016 season but just in that moment though that was I think I, w I, w I was actually in the down in the bowlers area waiting to get some interviews in case they finished up right there and I think there were a few just uh, wows that came came for me. I don't think I said them too loud because that would have been uh, distracting. Uh, it would have been, but uh, yeah, for those moments, those were just some of the uh, top shots I remember from that event, and definitely a lot to remember. But yeah, that was uh, 
definitely left a lasting memory since I'm talking so much about it here. So yeah, uh, it, and uh, when things like that happen at that event, it certainly does get loud in the building. Four for four for McCarthy. Yeah, you could just tell by the way the ball's going through the pins. Just going to throw a lot of strikes this game. It's almost like, you remember the uh, the lion and the uh, prey analogy that we used yesterday? Yes. So if you're watching one of those National Geographic shows and you watch a lion pounce on a, a baby deer, that's kind of what the ball is doing to the pins. The pins are the baby deer and the ball is the lion. And the pins just look like they're ready to lay down for that ball when uh, Aaron's throwing it right now. I was much better prepared for that today compared to <laughs> yesterday. So <laughs> wasn't as traumatizing. It wasn't as traumatizing <laughs> to, to put that visual reference in my head. So <laughs> now that I've had it's, I've had I've had a few hours to, to simmer on it and, and absorb it all. Sometimes it just seems like the pins are fighting back, and uh, right now when Aaron throws it. It, they're just putting up no resistance. They just kind of fold into the back of the pit and go easily. She absolutely hated that one and still struck. Still struck. It's a, it's a standing ovation from Anthony Simonson on that one. <laughs> standing right behind you. You didn't even know it. Masters champion. He's not even old enough to be in the casino. How'd they let him in? <laughs> uh, tell the authorities about this. <laughs> hey, when you're Masters champion, they, they <laughs> let you break a few rules. Yeah, I talked to Anthony a little bit uh, a few days ago at the Women's Championships. He was helping out Angie Ramirez and talked about all the travel he was doing I'm like yeah it's uh it's always good to get that out of the way before you start getting old and turn 21 so <laughs> uh. Anthony uh dating one of our TV finalists for the uh, upcoming PWBA sh shows, Angie Ramirez. She uh, she was there on hand when he took home the Masters title, and now he's here supporting her, and we'll be here for the, the TV tapings coming up Thursday. And uh, trying to help her get to another show here at the Queens. How cool would that be? Boyfriend and girlfriend, uh, Queens and Masters champions. Same year, yeah, that would be uh, that storyline kind of kind of writes itself. And we have it for the uh, team trials. We did, yes. Uh, team trials. Different set of boyfriend and girlfriend. That was uh, that was quite a week, Jason Thomas. But uh, yeah, definitely a great finish, and I'm not gonna. I'm not going to brag too much about that photo I took that was so <laughs> popular, but uh, <laughs> yeah. So, yes, that was a very cool moment getting the trophy photos of them both together at the at the end of the day. Of course, we're talking about Danielle McCune and Marshall Kent and, uh, and took the photo and Marshall uh, gestured. He said, take one more. All right, and then leaned in for a kiss on the cheek and Very cool moment, so that was uh, pretty awesome. I'm starting to see five, six in a row just in our immediate area popping up quite a bit. Yes, I'm uh, monitoring virtually through our live scoring application, which is available both through pwba.com and bowl.com. 
Amanda Green, one of those players. She did not strike in frame six, though. Yeah, that was the that was the uh, adjustment for that last one. She she said, "I don't want to miss in," and which is kind of the pro miss. You miss in and a little hard, and then the ball goes light. So she made sure she got the ball to out to the right to where where uh, it's picking up, and uh, but she caught it a little bit, grabbed it a little bit with her hand, and. She actually missed right of target on that shot, and the uh, ball ended up high at the pin. So. But it's uh, definitely a compensation for that last shot that she threw in the fifth. All right, uh, Brandy Sanderson just dropped off a quick note. Wanted to give a shout out to her coaches, Donna Connors and Carol Norman at You Can Bowl 2 Pro Shop. Yeah, we're going to get to see uh, Donna and Carol coming up in a few weeks. They host the uh, PBA PWBA Striking Against Breast Cancer Mixed Doubles there in Houston, Texas. And uh, we'll be visiting them on tour July 29th through the 31st. And if you don't feel like saying all of that, you can just call it the Lucy. You can. It's also known as. Great event. Sells out every year. Raises quite a bit of money for breast cancer research. And uh, players love going there every year. Shannon O'Keefe and Bill O'Neill, the defending champions. We have an update after game four of round two. Game nine overall for these competitors. Brigitte Poplar of Germany still on top of the standing. She had a rough game, 186. So she, she is human after all. Uh-oh. But uh, still at plus 372. 82 pins ahead of the rest of the field. Jezreel Tan in the second, plus 290. Kareen Lieber, we have in front of us, is at plus 273. Tish Johnson continuing strong. We saw her a few games ago, now at plus 266 in fourth. Daria Payuk, plus 255. Shayna Ung, plus 253. Aaron McCarthy, Plus 257, or plus 251, excuse me. She was at plus 257 after yesterday. Uh, she's tied with Diana Zavilova. Lindsay Boomershine in ninth at plus 242, and she's tied with Joey Yao. Yao. At plus 242. Y E O. That's how that's spelled. How it's said, I could probably say it 14 different ways, but. <laughs> Joey Y. Joey Y, along with Diana Z. Yeah. All right. That's the shortest name that we've ever had difficulty pronouncing. We're all about finding new ways here on Bull TV. Well, Shana, on extra um, her last name is two letters, and I think we screwed that one up for a while. All right, folks, there's a challenge. The one letter last name. <laughs> <laughs> that we can't pronounce. Rain Lieber with a strike in the eighth, bumps the 10. Cruising along. Brandy Branca back to back Brooklyn strikes on the left lane for a five bagger.
She didn't slap that one off, though. Trying to find out a little bit more about Corrine Lieber because uh, I will admit I'm unfamiliar with her coming into this event. That uh, she's certainly making a name for herself quickly. Looks like she bowled collegiately one year at Robert Morris, another at Lindenwood. Also appears to be a YouTube video up of her taking on Angie Ramirez. We were just talking about her in a Junior Bowlers Tour event back in 2013. Aaron McCarthy with the messenger. Slow, slow roller. Still got a possible 251. Brandy Branca working on five strikes in a row, looking to make it six here in the eighth. Plus 83 for her block today. And connects. Yeah, she's parlaying those Brooklyns into a big string of strikes here. zoomed past the spot. Looks like they're getting a little wet dry from uh, where Aaron's trying to play them. Yeah, it's... Uh Changed quickly on her after starting with five in a row. Well, it's funny. She threw that one in the fifth poorly. And then when something like that happens, sometimes you, you, you start to go into, she almost had it on autopilot, those first four frames. And then when something like that happens, it sometimes can knock you out of your rhythm. You start to think about it a little bit. And uh, it looked to me like in the sixth, she, she said, okay, make sure you don't gas this one and miss left in the oil and so she did the exact opposite and got it right and grabbed it and uh, that one went high and then all of a sudden now it's in your head and you're thinking about mechanics and 
it's amazing how quickly things can, can go off the rails. Could still save 219 here. Get plus for the day. Wow. <laughs> Boy. Goodness. 198 with the front five. And uh, Lieber went high on the right lane in the ninth, chopped the spare, and then said, okay, let's make sure you don't yank this shot and throws it out the window for a washout and uh, can go from possible 235 as she stepped up in the ninth to maybe shooting 180. Well, Mr. Thomas, looking at the scores, forget Poplar is going to be our leader after today. My confidence is through the roof saying that. She's uh, on decent pace to shoot another decent game, at least halfway through the final. Jazreel Tan was 80 plus pins away. Shot 230, so she got to plus 300, and, or better than plus 300, but yeah. For Jet rolling here through 10 games. Yeah, it looks like uh, Kelly Kulik, probably the only player that has a realistic chance of catching her, I would, I would assume. Randy's had kind of a, an interesting block. She started even for the day, 278 out of the gate, and now can finish with 269. And then uh, shot about even for the middle three games. So, well, it's amazing how quickly your fortunes can turn. Absolutely, yeah. Or taking advantage of the opportunity when it's there. Making some good shots here in the 250s at least. Yeah, that's going to put her in the top 64. Heading into the final day of qualifying. Danielle Schilling will lead the way on 27 and 28 as they're just about done. She's got... One more shot to go, can get to 204.
Perhaps a 10. Well, she probably probably was due for one of those after the two Brooklyn's, right? Sports got a funny way of evening out like that. I think she'll take those two Brooklyn's and live with that ring 10. I would too. <laughs> well, you have to, but <laughs> from a mental standpoint. Daria Payo can shoot 280 this game, just off to our left. She just rolled a two pin with her prodigious strike ball. First shot in the 10. So 258 for Brandy, great finish to the block. And as I mentioned, she'll be in more than likely in that top 63 number heading into the final day of qualifying, which will take place tomorrow, starting at 8 a.m. We've got one more round of qualifying here today. Have a bit of a break, six hours, Mr. Smith. Holy cow. You can fit a round of golf in. Round of golf, all right, let's do it. <laughs> There's plenty of great places here in Vegas for it, but uh, that's gonna do it for our coverage here this morning from the USBC Queens. Remind you to check into pwba.com and bowl.com for all the scoring. You can also follow the ladies who are still out on the floor. There's a couple ladies who have not finished with uh, game number five. You can follow the live scoring at bowl.com or pwba.com and also check out the latest standings there as well, which will be posted shortly after the conclusion of this round. So for Aaron Smith, this is Jason Thomas reminding you to tune in 5 p.m. local time, 8 p.m. Eastern time for our next qualifying block. It will be the A squad taking on a fresh oil pattern here at the Queens. And uh, that will conclude Day two in the books after that round is completed tonight, and then we'll have five more games tomorrow, both squads, starting at 8 a.m. So hope you have a great afternoon, and we'll see you in a few hours back here on Bowl TV on Extra Frame.